This is Nasha Kasha, Ukrainian Almanac. 28 minutes of stories for everyone about Ukrainian life. Nasha Kasha is heard on 15 campus and community radio stations from Newfoundland to British Columbia. Vitayu, welcome. My name is Stefan Andrusiak. This is an updated episode first heard in February of 2019. It was Muhammad Ali who said that friendship is the hardest thing in the world to explain. It's not something you learn in school, but if you haven't learned the meaning of friendship, you really haven't learned anything. Today you'll hear of two childhood friends from the summer music camp where they first met, followed by travel in Eastern Europe as teens. One then moved to join the other to study in the same city. We'll meet them as they now embark on their respective careers, dancing, dreaming, delighting in the city that is Thunder Bay. Ви завжди зі мною видаєте мені силу В тяжку хвилину заміняєте мені сім'ю Ви зі мною разом ми розтопимо цю кригу Лише разом ми розіб'ємо цю стіну Ви зі мною, ми разом стільки пережили Деколи дурниці, деколи розумні речі творили Ви зі мною, ви ніколи мене не лишали Коли я падав на коліна, ви за руку тримали Ви зі мною, друзі, а без вас і ніхто Тільки ви мене підтримали, коли мені важко було Ви зі мною, я знаю, що таких, як ви вже нема Ви близькі мені люди, ви моя сім'я Ми були разом ще малими, разом виростали Один за одного, інші ніяк все добре знали Бувало, ми сварилися, билися Та все прощали, і в щоденних проблемах дорослими ставали А я з вами, я вас пам'ятати буду Я з вами, я вас ніколи не забуду Прийшов час, і ми розлетимося в різні світи Знайте лише одне, я з вами буду завжди А я з вами, я вас пам'ятати буду Я з вами, я вас ніколи не забуду Прийшов час, і ми розлетимося в різні світи Знайте лише одне, я з вами буду завжди Я пам'ятаю досконало всі ваші слова Будь нормальним, не міняйся, залишись собою Ви говорили, щоб не сталося, ми завжди з тобою У всіх бідах для тебе ми будемо з ціною Я довіряю вам більше, ані самому собі I'm Andrika Verevoda. I'm a resident of Thunder Bay. Uh, my name is Simon Delegger, Semen Delega, and I'm also a resident of Thunder Bay. Uh, Semen, you weren't born here. Can you tell me about your place of birth and the size of your family, a little bit about your background? I was born in Toronto uh, in 1992, and I have only a father and a mother. I don't have any siblings. I'm an only child. In a Ukrainian community, you're never really alone because you're in, in Toronto, there's a huge Ukrainian community, and there's always a lot of Ukrainian things to do, so you basically adopt siblings. Like Gundrika, when I came here to Thunder Bay, is kind of my sibling now, too, so it's pretty cool. I have a sister and two parents. Uh, my sister's name is Larissa. You were born in Thunder Bay? Uh, yes, I was. So um, in the community, I grew up kind of on both ends of town. So Thunder Bay has was two communities, actually. It was Port Arthur and Fort William. Um, my uncle was a, a parish priest in Port Arthur. So often when I was a small child, my mom would go to work and I'd be with my grandmother, my baba, and my uncle for the day. So I grew up in the halls of Ukrainian churches making vereneke or holtsi and going attending liturgy or altar serving. And I think the joke in the community is my sister probably was one of the youngest altar servers. They got her in at three. She's holding a candle. Girls being altar servers, was that you at the time you you were a little girl? I suspect so. In Thunder Bay, I think a lot of things are unique in that respect in terms of the Ukrainian community, and that being one of them. I think even, um, we might talk about later, Holy Cross Church is an example too. If you look at it from the inside or the outside, it, it looks, I'd say, more of like a Roman Catholic looking church. And that's kind of to adapt to both the traditional Ukrainian community as well as kind of the evolving community in Canada as well. So kind of merging those two cultures together. Is that the one that looks like a giant sailing ship? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And we are sitting in front of which church now? I believe this is St. Mary's Orthodox Church in the East End. And you said Port Arthur. Thunder Bay was originally Port Arthur, Fort William. Where are we? We're kind of in the middle. I don't know. This is another area we just called the East End. I guess it would technically be in Fort William. This area where we are is very, very unique, actually. All the immigrants, when they first came to Canada, lived in this area. So Holy Cross, when it was built, was based off a church about two blocks from here, actually, called Transfiguration Church. And that church was too small for the population, so they built a new church for this booming, growing Ukrainian population in the community. Does Transfiguration still exist? 
Yes, it does, but it's a very small congregation. Your grandparents, when did they come to Canada or did they? Was it, were your parents the first generation? My dad's parents, they immigrated here and my dad was born here shortly thereafter. My mother immigrated here in 1986. My uncle, her brother, was here first as a priest in the community and then she came afterward. So I'm, I'm a first and a half generation, I guess. Yeah, both my uh, parents came from Poland, so they immigrated here, so I'm first generation Canadian here. Both both Ukrainian and Poland? Both Ukrainian, yeah. So they, they did Ukrainian stuff in Poland and because of history of how they had to relocate because of communism and all that stuff. So yeah, so they moved to Poland and then they, because stuff was going on, they had to move to Canada to have a better life and that's what they did. So were they Lamkos? No, they're actually Amboiko, um, but yeah. How did walk me through your studies and how you found your way to Thunder Bay? A long time ago, um, when I met Andrika, we met through we used to play bandura together. So we used to go to Ukrainian camps in Quebec for two weeks. We go play bandura all day, talk to each other, live together in like camp in a camp environment and stuff. It was a lot of fun, like palanque and stuff like that. Like it was a Zoom camp and stuff. So that's how we met. And then in grade nine, I went over and visited Andrika and Thunder Bay for the first time, and we had Christmas together for like two weeks or something. And then. Um, that's a long time. Did you, did you want him to stay that long? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. No. We're always happy to have visitors in Thunder Bay, for sure. Thank, and thank you for coming to visit us here. Thanks. No, it was really great. Then they had, like, the universities had people come over and talk about different schools and stuff. And I saw Lakin, and it looked really nice because it was a small school, and it was, like, in the middle of nowhere, and, like, you get to the smaller class sizes and stuff. I applied here, and it was the only place I got accepted to. So I was like, yeah, why not? My, might as well go to Lakin. And because I knew Andrika, it was a safe place because I knew someone Ukrainian, and my parents could ship me off at 17 without knowing anyone uh, 1,600 kilometers away, but they knew thought of all this, so it was really good. So that's that's basically what I why I made the move to Thunder Bay. Geology. What brought you into that field? I really like to learn about the Earth, so I took a course in grade twelve. I really enjoyed learning about how the Earth moves, how everything was created, and all that stuff. It really interested me. And then once I took my first course in geology, it was like this is exactly what I want to do, and I've been doing it ever since for eight years now. I come here and I look at the sky and I look at the surroundings, and I and I feel small, but in a good way. You know, you, it's I'm just filled with wonder at at, at this gorgeous land that you know, Canada, Ontario up here. Does it affect you in similar ways? Oh yeah, for sure. Like I can go two kilometers outside the city and there's bush everywhere. There's rocks everywhere. It's beautiful. Like just living here, it's awesome. I don't really like the big cities and like Toronto and stuff. I'm more going out in the field, exploring my own world and stuff like that. No chance of getting that big city feel here, that's for sure. Yeah, that's true. But like, I like it. It's a perfect size for me. It's compact. There's enough stuff that everything's here that you need, and but it's not too big that you can't still do your own thing outside. Tell me about this bandura playing. Were you part of a, a group? And where was this camp in Quebec? We are both part of Zoloti Strune, a base out of Mississauga, under the direction of Vera Zelinska. We had to attend in the month of August, uh, two weeks just outside of Montreal, very small town. Chertsey? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. St. Theodore de Chertsey? Yeah, yeah. Was this Camp Sofia, the Orthodox camp, or Verhovena? Verhovena. Verhovena was okay, the camp. Okay, so the Sumiusko said it. Yeah. A big place for, for kids because there's lots of areas for us to run around. There's palanque. There is, you know, the, the things you expect at camp. Um, but it was pretty regimented for, I would say, your summer vacation. So we'd wake up, you know, 8.30, have breakfast, have singing class, pl- practice um, with the group, then individual study in the afternoon. And then you had to prepare the whole afternoon for your 15, 20 minute one-on-one practice with your instructor. So it's pretty intensive for two weeks. But you also have lots of fun as well. When we're teenagers, we went on tour with Zolti Sune to Poland and Ukraine, visiting both and traveling and seeing and exploring, but also touring and playing bandura in various big cities in Ukraine and Poland when we were there.
How did it feel being in the place your grandparents lived? Uh, it was pretty cool. Actually, I got every time I go to Poland because I try to visit my grandparents and stuff. We go to different villages of, in Ukraine and Poland, and it's really cool to see where they where they came from. Their small villages and stuff. So we see their grave sites too of their parents too. So it's really nice to get to actually experience that and see that a lot. What sector of geology do you specialize in and what do you do today? What I specialize in right now is consulting. So what I'm doing, I'm doing consulting work for people, but I've done like sedimentary rocks. Now I'm doing igneous rocks and stuff like that. So companies hire us to f- try to figure out where they're supposed to dig. So they, we give information, we do a little bit of planning and stuff, and we tell them what they're what they hired us to do. Tell me about the difference between the two kinds of rocks, sedimentary and... Uh, so sedimentary rocks um, um, happen on the surface. So basically water takes it away, glaciers take it away. So basically what happens is any surface processes that occur that accumulate rock in one place, that's sedimentary rock. Igneous rocks, rocks coming from the earth or our mantle. So basically rocks come up, they either grow in the ground to form these bigger crystals or they explode in volcanoes and stuff. So we get uh, eruptive volcanic rocks. So those are the two differences. And there's also a third type of rock, which are metamorphic. So because because they get buried again, because there's so much rocks, there's been 4.6 billion years of rocks forming. So what's happening is they're getting buried and then they change because of the heat and pressure that's going on. So they, they're called metamorphic rocks. So you can get sedimentary metamorphic rock or you can get igneous metamorphic rock. And here in Thunder Bay, we actually have really, really old rocks. They can go from 2.1 billion, 1.1 billion, 2.6 billion that we've had. A little north of Thunder Bay, we have 3 billion year old rocks, so really, really old rocks. And this is why people call the Canadian Shield. It's the superior province, so it's pretty cool. And what would a company or an organization or a client want to know? Just as an example, give me one. They have a property. So you stake a land, basically... Yeah, if you have a prospecting license, you stake a land and then you have the mineral rights for that land. So what they do is they basically, they found a place where they might have found gold or silver or nickel, whatever they're looking for, whatever metal they're looking for. And then they take a sample and they're like, how does this ore shoot go? So how, if, where can I find more of this? So then we look at the structures, we look at the lithologies, we look at everything to figure out where how where it trends. So when they're digging, they can actually dig it out and they're looking in the right place. They're not like sh- shooting blanks when they're um, basically going in the ground. They want to find, they want to be economic and they want to make money. So basically we use geology to interpret stuff and how it formed because if we understand how it formed, then we can find out where it's trending and where you'll find more of whatever you're looking for. So that's what they hire me for. So. It sounds like you've moved to the right place part of the country for your work yeah yeah for sure especially the rocks here because this is what i'm interested in so this is perfect for me i love it thunder bay is home to the what might be become the economic hub for the ring of fire just north of us from a geology perspective when simon first came i think he was a bit still contemplating what he wanted to do in some sense and we said you know the ring of fire is such a huge economic upcoming thing in terms of development further up north there's tons of geology jobs that we think will occur and i I think there's still lots of opportunity in the ring of fire I think there's still a lot of political things that need to be ironed out in terms of working with the First Nation people in those areas, but I think there's lots of work upcoming in, in those areas. In 2012, when it was first talked about, it was a huge Indigenous issue. I mean, uh, the roads being built through the bush and ways of lives being changed for an original people, it seems to be slowly but surely being discussed and much of it is being settled, but it's still unsettling somehow, yeah. Keep the worries that we've always had It still lives inside This is a place where we love the land Let's work to show our pride Keep us safe, keep us free, like it used to be Don't wanna be tied down We find love where we're from And beat against the drums It's a beautiful sound From the ground up, we'll find a path home 
feel pulled by the sun, wish I can't go We learn from the past, now we can grow We're promised a chance that the plants show Go big, go far, there are no limits I wanna see change, so my soul lives it They cut down the trees, while we blow kisses Defend their home while they just miss us to Nui Jinan artists from the Grassy Narrows First Nation. The song Home to Me was recorded at the Sakajuwe Anishinaabe School in 2016. Grassy Narrows is more than 500 kilometers northwest of Thunder Bay. Prior to that, Zoluti Strune, which means golden strings, is the same Bandurist ensemble that provided music training, touring opportunities, and performing experience for Andrika and Simon. And we led the show with Druzi, which simply means friends, recorded in 2010 by a rapper called Double M. You work for a local health integration network and you're doing a full-time MBA. So LINs are a health planning body within different regional structures within Ontario. So there's 14 of them. So we're the planning, funding and integrating body, delivering home and community care services as well. So I've worked in the mental health and addiction sector, um, housing sector, working within transportation and sector as well, and, and understanding the, the health needs with, from a transportation perspective. Those are some areas that I focus in. And as you can imagine, in northwestern Ontario, transportation is a huge issue. But we're always talking and engaging people because not only in Thunder Bay, a hub of 100,000 people, but the smaller communities as well, they have a lot of knowledge um, within those communities that need to be shared. And not only from us in Thunder Bay, but also to those in Toronto who don't really understand how big northwestern Ontario actually is. How did you find time to come and sit in and, and do an interview with me today, Andrika? You're doing an MBA and you work full time. Just, I think, being organized and staying on top of things, I think, is pretty funny. A few weeks ago, Simon sent me this personality test to do, and I think he sent it to everyone in the Ukrainian community, so we've all had a good laugh about it. So uh, I think my personality type is super organized rules oriented, stay organized, keep people on their toes. So I think just it's in my nature to be organized and try to push myself to do that. Is this Myers Briggs or some other? Yeah, it's Myers Briggs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay. So uh, what what are you? Uh I'm a campaigner. So free spirit. Okay, so you're a free spirit. Yeah. And you're organized. I'm the executive. I'm that's what my character was called. So like the organization, like telling people what to do. But I'm theoretically very down-to-earth and nice as well, and sometimes a little bit stubborn as well. Is but there an indicator in the test as to whether you're keen on organizing free spirits? No, I don't, I don't want to touch that. <laughs> like I'm, not, I'm not sure what keeps me going. I kind of was thinking about that this morning, actually. I just said I kind of like being busy. Some people can't eat the same meal for a week. I can do that. Like I just prepare everything on Sunday and I have it for the whole week because during the week I have some evening classes as well and you just have to be prepared and ready to go. So I like being prepared and organized and you just got to buckle down and do it. I think that's what, that. What's that, fav- what's that favorite meal of sustenance for you that keeps you going an entire week? You can get a good ham, roast it up on Sunday and eat it all week. <laughs> You both dance? Uh, yes, we do. We dance with Siobhan Ukrainian Dance Group here in Thunder Bay. You've got two notable dance groups in this in this uh, city, and it's not a huge city, and it's not a huge community, and yet there they are. We do need two different dance groups. A lot of people talk to put both dance groups together, just have one really good one. We have so many people that actually join Ukrainian Dance that we need those two separate groups, so it's great that they showcase their talents, we showcase our talents, and it's great because we see each other at other competitions or we go to each other's concerts and stuff. And we also see them at Ukrainian events like Dauphin, we've seen them there too. So yeah, it is pretty cool. But yeah, our Ukrainian Dance, we talked about, it, it is the glue that holds everything together at the Ukrainian community. What's really interesting in the big transition for me from Toronto to Thunder Bay is when I came here, there's non-Ukrainians dancing Ukrainian dance. And that's, like, I tell my parents that they don't even comprehend that. That means Monday. It's the next day after Sunday. Sing with me. And Viltorok, that means Tuesday. It's the next day after Monday. On Viltorok, sing with me. Tejmenepidmanula, Tejmenepidvela, Tejmenemola, Dohazumazrozumuzvela, Tejmenepidmanula, Tejmenepidvela, Tejmenemola, Dohazumazrozumuzvela, Tejmenepidmanula, Tej
People are so proud of their culture now, and I think they just want to showcase that and share, whether you're Ukrainian or Italian, Polish, German, whatever. I think whatever your ethnicity, it, people are so proud and cherish it so much now, and I think Canada has really shifted in terms of how we, how we treat multiculturalism now. Ancestry is a big deal these days. You know. In Sault Ste. Marie, when, where I, I went last year before coming to Thunder Bay, I drove that time. There are people of Italian heritage te teaching Ukrainian dance. In Toronto, the champion ice skater Patrick Chan danced Ukrainian dance when he was a kid because his mom thought it was good exercise. <laughs> yeah, it is good exercise. It's a lot of fun. And like the difference between Ukrainian dance and other, the other Ukrainians, like under the coast, talking about Ukrainian school and then there's church and stuff. In the churches, you don't really find any young people because a lot of people don't like going to church and stuff, waking up and praying, right? So you get a lot of older people there, so you don't get that social outlet for kids. But what's cool about Ukrainian dance is like usually people are young, they try to be fit, and so it's like a big social hub, a Ukrainian social hub. So that's I think that's why it's really important for for uh, here in Thunder Bay. Actually, more recently, I believe last year, we, we started a parent and me class within our Chaban community. So mothers or fathers with their children and just bouncing, lear learning rhythm is really important. And I asked the head instructor teaching the course with her daughter, and I said, well, how, how are things going? And she says, you wouldn't believe it. Um, my, her daughter's name's Eleanor. Just, you know, her knees are over her toes. She, she's clapping to rhythm. She understands beat. So introducing that so young, you know, these kids are learning this culture and listening to, the, to that music. Knees over the toes, that's a good thing? In a plie, yes. Simon won't tell you yet, but he's one of the best split jumpers you'll ever see. Probably in Ontario. I'd, I'd give you that ranking. Uh, Simon, you winced when she said that. Uh, well, yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I can jump. And it's I, been pretty good, too. Yeah, I practice a lot, and I try to be better. She's organizing your free yeah, spirit. Yeah, I know, right? Just let me fly. Just let me jump. Yeah. And just Simon's also done a lot of really cool work. Um, his choreography is really superb as well, cause, because when Simon came to uh, Thunder Bay, um, he had trained in Toronto with a different group, and it actually took him a few years before we convinced him to try to join the Thunder Bay troupe. Um, why is that? Ukraine. I used to dance for Ukraine. It was very strict. It was very hardcore. It was very almost like communism. It's like, point your leg. It was, it was, it was really intense and stuff. Who was your instructor? Lesya Mofchan. Or have you heard of him? I was there since I was three until I was 16. So I was, it was used to that, all that structure. And yeah, it made me into the dancer that I am. So I'm really happy I got that opportunity. And then I came here and I felt like if I joined another dance group, it'd be like cheating on my dance group. Then I saw them dancing. They're having so much fun at Zababa and stuff. I was like, well, I might as well try Ukrainian dancing and see how it goes because I've been doing it for so long. And then <laughs> since that day, I've been here ever since. I think one thing that makes Thunder Bay kind of unique and not just Thunder Bay, but any community if you do attend churches and, par and different parishes, talk to, the, talk to those Ukrainian babas and dinos there and get to understand their stories because... The grandfathers and the grandmothers. Yes, the grandfathers and the grandmothers, because I think each of their stories to Canada is so, so unique. And the things that they went through, I don't think anyone can really truly understand or appreciate those things. And as they get older and you see some of them getting, um, you know, dementia, they go back to kind of older ways and you see some things that kind of stuck with them these, their whole lives, that just kind of these internal things that you don't really realize were there, and they kind of, they come up, kind of flare up a little bit. And you think about things today and how we talk about mental illness and mental health, and I don't think that was a thing talked about back then, well, of course, after the war times. And just the things they had to go through and see and do are astonishing. My grandmother herself, you know, um, she was... I guess I mentioned Peremish also because that's where my family is from in that area. So on the Poland-Ukraine border, my, my grandmother tells a story. One day her parents just told her, grab some goats, grab some cows, meet us at the train station. And that's what they did. And they got into that train and they were on that train for three weeks and they were relocated to northeastern Poland. Um, so, and just, you know, it's like sardines in a, in a boxcar, not stopping, just going. Operation Vistula. That's correct. Yes, I looked that up. So um, the things that, and not just my family, but everyone's family had to go through such hardships and 
um, you know, talk to them because that soon that, that knowledge and those stories will be lost and um, until we see them again, I guess, until we can learn more from them. Many cultures have terrible hardships, but this one is uniquely ours. Within my, my schooling, you know, I'm meeting people from all sorts of different cultures and learning about the hardships they go through. Everyone goes through hard times, but I think it's by learning and talking about it that we learn about it. And as soon as we brush it underneath the rug, we've, we've, we've lost something, right? I think the best way to learn and, is by talking about it. And being. Indigenous people have a great respect for elders. I think it's something that we could well benefit from. Yeah, they definitely do, and I think um, I think a lot of cultures do. Uh, they, uh, we don't call them elders, but I think if I look at my church community, I say we have lots of elders. I have lots of babas. My my baba just passed away this this spring, and I I've, I've lost obviously someone very close to me. But you know, I, I feel a bit comforted knowing that I grew up in that community, and there's so many other um, babas and didos that I can speak to, and or grandparents to speak to, and just you know connect with them. And I think similarly, they want to hear how I'm doing as well. I really like Thunder Bay. I don't even want to come back to Toronto, even though my parents get really mad and they, they try to come make me come home and so to visit them. But it's a really nice Ukrainian community. It's really... It's, You're an only kid. Of course they want you to come home. <laughs> I know, I don't. But they have dogs and chickens. They're okay. They can spend time with them. But it's a really nice, closed Ukrainian community. It's a, r- a really different mentality of people, too. Like, they're really nice down to earth. Um, a little meaner in Toronto. But um, I really like it here in Thunder Bay, and it's a great place to live. Thunder Bay is um, turning into a very knowledge-based economy, and I think more and more young people are coming up here and realizing it's such a beautiful place to live. You can afford a a house pretty reasonably here and not break your bank account doing so. Um, So I think there's a lot of opportunity within the Thunder Bay. I don't think I want to go anywhere else. Since recording these interviews, Andrea has changed jobs. She is now working full-time at Lakehead University. Simon is a geologist working two hours by plane to the north. He's in Thunder Bay every two weeks. Simon and Andrea and the rest of the Chaban Dance Group are preparing to celebrate 20 years of Ukrainian dancing with a big concert in April of 2020. You're listening to Jay Kuczynski as he plays his arrangement of a traditional Ukrainian melody. This rendition is called Borscht and Bluegrass. Before that, Budia with their musical lesson on how to say the days of the week in Ukrainian, which is called Days of the Week, and Samot Svit with Tuman Yarom, a soulful song about a mist in a ravine. Partial funding for Nasha Kasha comes from the Tarashuchenko Foundation and the Ukrainian Credit Union. Nasha Kasha is also a podcast. Find it free wherever you get your podcasts. I'll be back in a week, God willing. Do milu izustrici za tijin chasu, dorihi sluhachin.